Hi again then guys and welcome to another specific car review from the batch of cars which were in the game from day one. Just like the McLaren from a couple of days ago, this time though we're going well away from the world of exotics, supercars, super sports cars, but into what you could arguably say is the most affordable approach to performance and has been since you could say at least the 80s, maybe even a little bit earlier, and that is of course the hot hatch. And in the world of hot hatches, there are very different approaches to that same concept. You've got Germany, which has a lot of turbocharged or sometimes naturally aspirated all-wheel drive options, like your Audi S3s, later on the RS3s, the Golf R32s, later the Golf Rs, a number of others like that. Now even the Mercedes A45 with a very similar approach. Then, of course, you've got Japan. Japan doesn't have as many hot hatches in that kind of category, and so the Civic Type R tends to be the top of the pack, and most of the others tend to have a more understated approach. For instance, the hot versions of the Toyota Corolla, or the Nissan Pulsar, which of course is more old school in its approach, kind of a rally car for the road, if you will. And then you've got the rest of Europe, in effect. Ford Europe, with the Focus RS and the STs, and Europe tends to have a fairly similar approach, apart from Germany, I would say, to Japan, where they typically go for smaller turbocharged engines with front-wheel drive, whereas Germany really is the one that stands out with the much larger capacities and all-wheel drive, until recently, at least, where they've moved more towards the 2.0-litre turbos, but more often than not retaining that all-wheel drive advantage. Now, in the case of a Civic, if you think of front-wheel drive hot hatches, especially now, the Civic is not as dominant in people's minds, or at least in most people's minds as it used to be. Because if you think back to, for instance, the late 90s with the EK Civic, if you ask most younger petrol heads then, not just VTEC enthusiasts, which is kind of a meme, but just fans of hot hatches in general, if you ask them what the best front-wheel drive hot hatch was, most would have probably said the EK Civic. Some might have said maybe something from Peugeot or Citroen perhaps, like a Saxo VTS or a VTR, but the general consensus would have probably swung towards Civic more than anything else, whereas now it doesn't have the monopoly anymore because of stuff like the Focus ST, which is such a great rival. Plus, of course, the Civic doesn't have the same advantages anymore. It's a bigger, heavier car, and although it's more powerful and more torquey, it's just not the same machine. The Civic EK is such a hardcore, almost track-focused vehicle, to the point where, although I'm not a huge fan of it, certainly not a fanboy as many are, I can certainly see why people do love them. For me, I love the Integra far more, although it has a lot of similarities to it. Now, in the case of this one, I would say that this is the closest that the Civic has ever been to the Ford Focus ST's approach, where it's a much bigger, much heavier, but still very fast approach to a front-wheel drive hatchback. The question is, though, is that a good idea for a Civic, or should it have stayed small? Well, that's the issue for me, because ever since that spaceship-shaped Civic Type R first showed up with the weird glass windows and the glass grille, you know the one I'm talking about, it kind of went downhill for me, as far as Civics. And I know a lot of people would disagree, but to me, the Civic lost its main advantage. And that was that it was so much different to the Euro hatches. It had this completely different, much more hardcore approach. And now, I've got to say, it feels a little generic. Now, I know a lot of people are not going to like me saying that. Some people will say, nah, you don't know what you're talking about. And of course, that's fair enough. We've all got our own opinions, but the Civic just doesn't feel like it has an edge anymore. It feels expected to me. The fact that it has 305 horsepower, again, not too surprising. It's got 295 pound-feet of torque, which is a lot more than a, a VTEC would usually have. Again, sign of the times, technology moving ahead, of course. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. I just wish, almost, that more of the spirit of the older car had still remained, I guess. And that's something which I think Renault has done pretty well, because although their cars have got bigger and heavier and more powerful, they do kind of still feel like they have that spirit of like the Clio Williams or the Clio 182 or the older Megans like the R26, which is my favourite hot hatch of all time. So it's not that they can't stay true, they could, and I'm sure there are plenty of people who believe that they could, but for me this Honda just, it doesn't wow me, because the EK 
does, and so does the EP. I think that they're both very, very good hot hatches at what they do. And regardless of whether you like it or not, the fact is, for its power, the EK is a great performance car. It's seriously fast, even without any tuning. This one is fast, but because it's supposed to be, it's trying to be, it's got over 300 horsepower. That, of course, is the norm for hot hatches these days, but I think it's kind of a shame that that's the norm, because they shouldn't need to be that powerful. The whole point of a hot hatch used to be that they're these more affordable, lower level cars which squeeze a huge amount of performance out of a relatively small amount of power, which to some degree is what K cars still do. The Daihatsu Core, the Storia Cross 4. Again, Japan knows what they're doing when it comes to that kind of thing. These, though, I don't know. To me, I think it feels like almost a sellout. It feels like Japan is trying to be Europe with this car, and I don't like that. I would rather that they stayed true to the Japanese way, which is being more affordable, lighter, smaller, and more high revving. And I think that that would have suited the Civic more. But of course, it's down to personal opinion. In terms of how it actually performs, well, the vast majority of people have probably driven it in the game by this point which is why I'm not getting into it as much, but as far as how it does perform, it's not bad by any means. The handling is very forgiving. As far as front-wheel drive goes, Honda, of course, knows what they're doing. So it goes without saying it's going to be great through corners. And if anything, I would say it has a little bit less torque steer than something like a Focus ST could have. It still feels lighter on its feet than the 1380 kilo curb weight could have you believe, which incidentally, again, that's not an impressive weight. The Golf weighs 1390 and that has all wheel drive. That's only 10 kilos more and this is a front wheel drive car. It should be a whole lot lighter than that. The horsepower per ton is 221. Again, decent enough. But if they'd made this car with more of an old school approach, who knows how much lighter it could have been. I'm not saying 900 kilos or anything ridiculous like that, but you could quite easily take a more, say, early 2000s or even late 90s approach to its size and build and it could have still stood out from the crowd much, much more. There are certain logistical issues with that as far as safety, tech, but again, Honda knows what they're doing. They could have made that work. Ultimately, this is the choice that they went for though, and to me, it's not a bad hatchback. In fact, you could say it's a good one. Some would probably say a great one. I'd, I don't think I'd go that far myself, but I believe that in the case of this car, arguably more so than the Focus ST, because the Focus has actually stayed very true to what it always was, more so than cars like that, I think that the Civic Type R could actually benefit by going back to those 90s and early 2000s roots a little bit more when it comes to its layout. But maybe that's just me. Overall though, it's not a bad hatchback, it's a 42 grand car, which again is kind of the norm, hatchbacks are getting more expensive. Again, to me that kind of misses the point, but there you go. But sure, give it a try, it's not a bad car at all, I just have more of an issue thinking that it could have been a great one, and to me, it's not quite great, it's just good. But that's it for this pick, of course, I'll see you guys next time, and as always, thanks for watching.